One of President Trump's top advisors is gone, but far from forgotten. General Michael Flynn is now the target of an FBI investigation, but it doesn't end there. KCO9 political reporter Dave Bryan has new details of Flynn's sudden departure and the lingering fallout that has occurred just not even 24 hours after this happened. Absolutely. This story is just exploding yeah. tonight in every direction. New developments this evening after the stunning resignation of President Trump's national security advisor. Tonight, there are new reports that high level advisors to the Donald Trump campaign, including Michael Flynn, who resigned last night, and former Trump campaign manager Paul Manafort, were in constant communication with Russian operatives during the 2016. Presidential campaign and the FBI is reportedly investigating. So Flynn's resignation may not be the end of this story. What did the president know and when did he know it? Echoing themes from the Watergate scandal more than four decades ago, angry Democrats are demanding a bipartisan, independent, Watergate style investigation of the Trump administration's ties to Russia after National Security Advisor Michael Flynn's stunning resignation Monday night. This is deadly, deadly serious. CBS News reports the FBI is now investigating whether Flynn, whose resignation was demanded and received by President Trump, lied to its agents or violated a law that bans private citizens from negotiating with foreign countries. I, Donald John Trump, do solemnly swear. And CBS News reports that within days of President Trump's inauguration, the FBI investigation into Flynn's phone calls with the Russian ambassador began with interviewing Flynn. The FBI's counterintelligence unit is leading the investigation, which is also looking into whether Flynn and at least one other associate were in contact with Russian operatives during the 2016 campaign. A former CIA director says this could have shocking repercussions. It turns out that any deals were made, uh, this would be not only unprecedented, but would be shocking and would be something that you would have to take active steps to ensure never happens again. And it would leave a permanent stain on this administration. Flynn's talks with the Russian ambassador took place before President Trump's inauguration. The president was very concerned that General Flynn had misled the vice president and others. White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer says Flynn's forced resignation was all about trust or lack of it. He no longer had the trust of his national security advisor or the erosion of that trust was frankly the issue. Flynn's calls to the Russian ambassador to the U.S., Sergei Kislyak, began on December 25th, supposedly to exchange Christmas greetings. Three days later, Flynn called the ambassador a second time. And the next day, the Obama administration announced sanctions against Russia and expelled 35 diplomats in retaliation for Russian cyber attacks on the Democratic National Committee. Russian President Vladimir Putin did not retaliate and won praise from then-President-elect Trump, who tweeted, great move on delay by V. Putin. I always knew he was very smart. Two weeks later, Vice President-elect Pence told Face the Nation that there were no conversations between Flynn and the ambassador about sanctions. Now it appears he was lied to by Flynn. And on January 26th, the acting attorney general informed the White House that Flynn may have lied to the vice president and others about those conversations. The president was briefed on the situation by White House lawyers the same day. On January 30th, Flynn was interviewed by the White House counsel and the FBI about his phone conversations with the Russian ambassador. The White House insists he did not break any laws. Last Friday, Flynn said he couldn't recall if sanctions came up in those discussions. And just four days ago, President Trump was asked by reporters on Air Force One about a report in the Washington Post about those discussions. What do you make of reports um, that General Flynn had conversations with the Russians about sanctions before you were sworn in? I don't know about it. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen that. I'll look at that. That was 15 days after the president had been briefed on the Flynn conversations with the ambassador. But the White House press secretary says the question was about whether he had seen a news story about it. Was he aware of a Washington Post story? He hadn't seen that at the time. Of course he was involved. I just said that he was aware of the situation right after the White House counsel informed him back in January. Did the president instruct him? 
to talk about sanctions? No, absolutely that? not. No, no, no. But th that, no. And there's no, that, that's never. So would you prefer to have not done that? Well, I, I think the president was, had no problem with the fact that he acted in accord with what his job was supposed to be doing. House Speaker Paul Ryan and other Republicans say there's no need for an independent bipartisan special commission to investigate the ties with Russia. Um, the Intelligence Committee has been looking into this thing all along. And House Intelligence Committee Chairman Devin Nunez from Visalia, a Republican, says he's not interested in investigating Flynn, telling reporters it just seems like there's a lot of nothing there. And Utah Republican Jason Chaffetz, whose committee examines government wrongdoing, says it's not his committee's job to investigate Flynn either. When I get into sources and methods, it really is the purview of the Intel Committee. But Burbank Congressman Adam Schiff, the ranking Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee, says President Trump needs to come clean on the Russian connection. The president needs to speak directly to the American people. He ought to level with the American people. Uh, what did he instruct Mike Flynn to do uh, in these conversations with the Russian ambassador? What was his message? Uh, were they sending signals uh, to the Kremlin? that explain why the Kremlin didn't react, didn't respond when we imposed sanctions. Now, tomorrow, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is scheduled to meet with President Trump in Washington. They're expected to hold a brief news conference as part of the visit. It will be interesting to see if that happens, and if so, whether Mr. Trump will be facing tough questions on the Flynn case and the Russian connections. Lena, back to you.